Hey, what's up? Welcome to video number nine in the series I'm doing on this guitar. It is a Telecaster, if you weren't aware already, and I didn't buy it just like this, brand new. I put it together from parts, so you could call it a parts caster. But in fact, it's not that many parts. It is a fully loaded, road-worn Telecaster body, complete with the original pickups and the electronics, and the neck I actually purchased from MusicCraft, separately customized to my specifications. The only reason I did not buy a brand new stock Rotorn Telecaster is the fact that the neck comes coated in polyurethane or a urethane finish, I believe they call it, and it's also a seven and a quarter inch radius. So the neck I ended up buying has a nine and a half inch radius, and I ended up finishing the neck in nitrocellulose myself. I've got a lot of other videos on this guitar. Like I said, this is number nine, so be sure to check out the entire playlist by clicking on this eye up here in the corner. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about how I finished the back of the neck, and of course, I'll get into the details about how I did it later on in the video. So of course I did this to the back of the neck myself. It's not a really old guitar, 50 years old or more, that someone played and wore in themselves. It is something that I did to make it feel worn in myself. I know a lot of people don't like that, but it is what it is. So let me touch on something up front that I didn't really get to at the end of the video. It happened subsequent to the last clip I took of finishing this part of the neck. And that is, spoiler alert first of all, I used tried and true oil, which I got from Stuart McDonald on the back of the neck. It gives it a nice satin, pretty much a bare wood finish and I put a couple of coats of oil on the neck after what I had thought was the final coloring of the neck itself. But what I realized is that I wanted it a little bit darker. So what I did was, as the tried and true oil was sort of drying, it was slightly tacky to the touch where I could put a little bit of graphite or basically pencil lead onto the neck, kind of smear it on there, work it in, and even go over it with some steel wool. And so that kind of gave it a little bit of the grayish look that you see here. Uh, it's not a real big difference as to what it looked like at the end of this video that you'll see but I just want to make that clear and transparent that I did do a little bit more work with the graphite on the back of the neck and I'm sorry I don't have a detailed video of that it was sort of a trial and error kind of thing but I hope you get something out of this video that you can use it for a project or something that you're doing thanks again for watching be sure to check out the playlist like I said and we'll see you in the next video Okay, the current step I am on with this Telecaster neck is that I need to get the clear coat of the lacquer off this portion of the neck where, you know, your hand would go and it would eventually wear off the lacquer clear down to the wood. So I mentioned this earlier at some point, but I'll mention it again. The way it got to where it is right now is that I just kind of got trigger happy and I started putting on the clear coat and the tent coat without thinking about the fact that I really didn't need it on the back of the neck. And so instead of taping it off, like I said, I just kind of started doing it. And then at some point I just wised up and thought, I'll just cover it up and stop putting nitrocellulose on it because there's no reason to. It's just gonna be more work in the future. So now I'm at this point, and so I need to get what little is on there off. And what I'm gonna do is just go at it with sandpaper. I don't really know the best grit to start with. I have 150 here. That might be a little too rough. So I'll try it a little bit and just see if it comes off too fast, then I'll, I'll step back to something more fine. But you know, I do have to get it all off. So I imagine that if I start with like 320 or 400 or something, uh, it's gonna be a lot of work. So we'll see how this goes. What I need to be careful with is that I don't, you know, roll the sandpaper over on the edge of the fretboard. That's gonna be a big no-no. So like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing. I haven't done this really before so hopefully I don't ruin it or anything but that's the idea and then once I get all the nitro off I plan to tint the wood a little bit with a stain like probably a homemade stain like coffee or tea just to uh, darken it up a little bit so it won't be such a stark contrast between these two areas all right so here we go of course I don't want to change the neck profile at all either so that's something I gotta look out for. And I'm just eyeballing it down the neck to make sure I don't, like I said earlier, roll over on the fretboard or the fingerboard and take anything off of that. So it looks like it's coming off fairly easy. I feel like I'm already getting down to some of the bare wood. So maybe I should go back to a, a finer grit. The trickiest part, I think, is going to be uh, getting it nice and even. So, yeah, what I think I'm going to do is get, maybe I'll go over this just a little bit more, or I can start getting a, a more even feel for 
areas getting down to the wood and then I'll take it down to a finer grit paper because I don't want to take any kind of material, any wood material off the neck. You'll see I got a little run there with the tent coat and I just, it's gonna come off with this sanding, which is fine, no big deal. Okay, we're getting closer. I haven't switched over to any kind of finer sandpaper at this point. What the telltale sign is for me is I can still see some sort of uh, glossy or glistening areas on the neck where the light is shining off of it. So I know that's not down to the bare wood yet. So I'm gonna keep going a little bit. And this is also a good indicator. I know this high spot is that um, little run I had there. So I'm not really getting down past that yet. Um, at some point, like I said, I'll switch over to a finer grit. Well, I feel like I'm pretty much there overall. I'm still on the 150 grit just because I don't feel like I've gotten all the way down to the bare wood on a lot of these spots. And the main part at here I have, but up closer to the neck, I'll do this a little bit more. And then I'll maybe switch over to the 320 because I don't want to be scratching this top part up here with 150 grit sandpaper. So I'm just kind of getting up kind of close to it. And then I'll take a more fine sandpaper and kind of try to blend this edge in, I think. And same thing with this down here. You can see my high spot is all but gone. So I'll just keep doing Doing this a little bit more and eventually I will switch over to a different grit sandpaper. I'm almost to the point of switching over. Just wanted to point out a few things. The skunk stripe still has a little bit of clear, glossy, kind of shiny stuff in it, but that's to be expected because walnut is a more porous wood than maple. So it's gonna have some areas that just got the clear coat down in there and that's fine, no big deal. The clear coat just kind of acts as a sort of grain filler, if you will, in the skunk stripe. And then on the edges of the fretboard, it wasn't as big of a deal as I thought to, you know, I don't feel like I'm risking coming over onto the fretboard. When I taped it, you know, I it's just the line I chose when I taped it up. If you kind of look at it in the right angle, you can see a little bit of this edge, whereas a contrast between the dark sort of tint stain and the way the wood is now. But like I said, I'm gonna stain it and make it darker. So that should blend in a little better. And the important thing is just to have a good feel on the back of the neck and to not have a really stark contrast. Again, that's the, that's the goal, that's what I'm going for. And then the final thing I wanted to mention is that it is really important to get down to the bare wood because if I don't, it's not gonna take stain and it's gonna be obvious when I try to go and stain it. So it's pretty easy to tell where the spots are that are still a little darker or the areas that I'm not down to bare wood yet. And I'm really close to getting a finer paper and going over this area right here. Um, this is gonna be the trickiest part, obviously. I'm gonna, I don't know, maybe it's not obvious, but to me, even with my Stratocaster, I didn't really know what to do with these areas where there was a really defined line of transition. I guess the best thing would be maybe in retrospect to make the line further this way. and into the neck this way and then just really sand back until you get you know just sort of this almost like natural wear but I, you know I'm not an expert I'm just sharing what I what I know and what I've uh, been able to experience with my attempts okay switching over to 320 now Now I'm done with the 320. I'm just gonna take some 600 grit now and go over these transition areas. I don't really have a basis for doing it. I just think maybe it'll take any kind of scratch marks out of the lacquer that might be there from the 320 because I feel like I can kind of see some. And then maybe I'll go over it with some, I already have gone over it with steel wool on the lacquered part, but maybe I'll just go over with that again and see if there's any scratch marks once I clean off all the sawdust or wood dust from the neck area. Just gonna clean this off now with a damp paper towel to get off all the sawdust and to examine the state of my 
transition areas. Okay, now that I'm done sanding the back of the neck, what I have here is a cup of coffee, also with a tea bag in it, black tea, and I have a maple dowel rod. So what I didn't wanna do is to just blindly put this on the back of the neck without testing it on something. This isn't the greatest test piece, but it is maple, so I'm assuming it will react pretty similarly to what the neck will do. And my limited experience with doing anything like this, and with just some research online and some other people's YouTube videos, I don't really expect this to be really dark on the first application. It's probably gonna take a couple, and that's fine. I'd rather it go on lightly in a few layers and darken up over those layers than try to do all at once and, and be something that I can't really recover from. So I'm just gonna take this. It's actually still a little bit warm, but what you can do is use the tea bag as kind of an applicator. So instead of using a paintbrush or something like that, just use the tea bag. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit, nothing fancy, onto the end of this dowel rod and see what kind of results that I get. And of course you have to let it dry because you're not gonna get a true representation without it drying. So we'll see, let it dry a little bit, see what happens. So it barely did anything to really darken up this piece of maple, which is fine. I think, you know, it doesn't make me afraid to put it on the neck and see what, you know, happens. I'll leave it overnight, maybe do a few applications. And then what I want to do is gradually get up to a, a darker color. And so there's not that stark contrast, but yeah, it doesn't really make me afraid to put anything on there. It's not going to hurt it. You know, it's just essentially water with some tannins and stuff in it. So I'll do that. I'm just gonna clean the neck off with some paint thinner to make sure that there are no you know, oil spots or residue or fingerprints, anything like that. Make sure everything is off and that there's no hindrance to the stain getting on there evenly. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to apply it now. What I don't want to do, and as a word of precaution, you don't want to get it too soaking wet around the lacquer because you run the risk of the wood getting too wet and swelling and having the lacquer pop up on you or chip. So I don't want to get it, well, like I'm doing now, getting it soaking wet. I don't think the tea is gonna really get me very far. It's gonna take a lot of applications and I don't want the wood to be soaking wet so you can't really do a lot at one time. So this may be against my better judgment but what I have is some stain pins. This one is, uh, what does it say, early American which gives me no clue as to what it really looks like. The cap is black and that does not really indicate the color. This other one is I think something that just came with some furniture. It says guardsman touch up pin and it's light but I tested it on my little maple dowel rod and that is the white pin and this you can see it is the darker well the the uh the men wax one the yellow pin which i think this darker one is too dark but this one looks like a really good match to the finish of the tint of the rest of the, the back of the neck so i think i'm gonna try this pin on the neck like i said hopefully it's not against my better judgment i do have a fresh paper towel here if anything gets you know if I get any excess, I can kind of blend it in, hopefully, and see how it goes. Wish me luck. Okay, I took some paint thinner and I went over this a lot with paper towel and paint thinner. And 
and it helped a lot. So paint thinner has been my saving grace a lot of times. I think I can live with this. Yeah, it was pretty obvious that that was a stupid decision to try to stain this with a touch-up pen for furniture. So in retrospect, lessons learned. Don't do anything late at night. Don't make rash decisions, especially regarding stain. I mean, I know better. I know that stain has a tendency to go on very splotchy, especially on maple. So that was a dumb idea. Don't do it. Don't do what I do. Unless it turns out well, then maybe do it. But this is generally what I was looking for. I don't know at this point that I'm gonna get any darker, but I'm definitely not gonna try the touch up pen again. We'll see what the next step is. Okay, this is where I'm at with the neck. When we last left it, it was pretty horrible. In this area, I had taken a wood stain pen and like a five year old started marking on the neck and that was a bad idea. And I knew it, I don't know why I did it. So I was kind of freaking out trying to figure out what to do. And the solution that I came up with that worked pretty well was I started immediately sanding it back with 320 grit and I think maybe steel wool in a combination, 320 first and then steel wool. And what it did was kind of remove a little bit of surface stain and get it back to a, and it maybe like blend it in a little bit. It wasn't perfect. What I had was a lot of bare areas where it looked like the stain hadn't taken, you know, just splotchy. And so what seemed to work pretty well was localized sanding. So if I had a strip that was kind of pale, you know, it looked like it didn't take the stain, I would just take my 320 grit and rub in that area until I sort of saw bare wood again. And then I ended up taking like a rag and, you know, putting the, the stain marker on a rag or even like a paper towel and just getting it, you know, on there pretty good and then going over that localized spot. And that seemed to work fairly well. I also did a combination of the Minwax, which is a darker stain. And this one didn't seem to soak in as well, but I do think it added to the darkness. And I did have to do a couple of coats. You know, at first it was pretty light, not making a whole lot of difference. And it seemed like the more I added, it wasn't doing anything, but when I stepped back or maybe it soaked in the wood and it did come out darker. So I'm pretty satisfied with the way it looks now. And I did have to sand these areas, these transition points really well. I had to get in there with 320 and then 600 and really scrub and, and scratch and really get in there and sand those areas as much as I could. I wanted to kind of get rid of this pale line, but I wasn't able to, and I don't want to really mess with it anymore. I'm okay with it. I've seen a lot of uh, custom shop and other relic guitars that have those lines in there. So I'm not too worried about it. And I did try attempt to do some graphite with a pencil. If you try to mark on there with a pencil, it's going to look like pencil lines. So what I did was I rubbed it on my finger and I tried to rub it on here and it got really kind of this weird, I don't know if it's the oils in my skin, but it got kind of sticky and splotchy. And so I kind of had to rub that in or sand it back. And so I tried to do it a little evenly here and there and I think it may have added to some of the darkness. There may be some hints of black in there, but I really don't know. I think really the thing that did it most was a combination of these stains. So now at this point, I'm going to add the Tried and True oil. This is from Stumac. This is not a Stumac brand. Tried and True is his own thing. It's just sold by Stumac. And what this is, is a linseed oil. It's, it says it's polymerized, which I don't really know what that means, but it also has beeswax in it. So linseed oil will go on as a, you know, as a, a liquid finish, but it'll eventually harden and it'll basically become impenetrable so it will protect the back of the neck but it will feel basically like it's bare wood so that's why I like the idea of sanding it back to bare wood and putting in the oil on there versus the nitro just feels a little bit more natural so like I said I'm gonna take this it says to do a very thin coat and then wait 60 minutes and then buff it to a desired sheen I think they recommend using steel wool to buff it out so anyway I'm gonna go for that now
Okay, mission accomplished. The first application has been put on. So now we have to wait at least 60 minutes and then buff out. And then it says wait 24 hours before you put on any other coats. So I don't know how many coats I'm gonna do, probably two or three and then call it. But at this point, uh, I'm just gonna wait to buff it out and then wait 24 hours for another coat. I don't have it figured out, but I take